morning. My name is Edgar Zanotto. I'm a professor at the Federal University of São Carlos and head of the Vitreous Materials Laboratory, the LAMAV. Uh, we have 40 years, um, just completed 40 years working in this field, and I'd like to share with you some of our staff, some of our facilities, our research lines, and opportunities for collaboration. We are part of the Center for Research, Technology, and Education in Vitreous Materials, the CERTEV. So, um, let's start with our research equipment. We have a list of traditional research equipment, and uh, many glass labs have more or less the same type of equipment, including furnaces, DSCs, microscopes, X-ray diffraction units, and, and um, similar equipment. But I like to call your attention to our special homemade equipment, such as this pilot scale furnace. We can melt, for instance, up to seven kilograms of glass in the lab. And I know that industries have such type of equipment, but not many labs on this planet have this kind of furnace. We also are very proud of this uh, penetration viscometer with different sample holders, which can be used to determine the viscosity of glass up to very high values, 10 to the power 16 Pascal second or so. So this is a kind of unique equipment which works very well. Also, have a very unique um, fiber drawing tower. It's not very high, much smaller than the traditional commercial towers, but we can draw fibers in lab scale. And for instance, now we are producing bioactive glass fibers using this equipment. Uh, we also have 16 heat treatment furnaces, which are very special because we are able to control uh, the temperature within plus or less one degree Celsius, which is very important for precise nucleation, crystallization, or relaxation treatments that we do in this lab. We have three professors. Professor Ana Rodriguez, she is an expert on electrical properties of glasses and glass ceramics. Professor Oscar Paito is a lab equipment design geek. He was behind the design of those homemade equipment and some others uh, in our lab. That's his hobby, and which is very useful and interesting for our lab. But he also works on bioactive glasses and glass ceramics. And then we have a youngest faculty in the group, in the glass research group, Professor Marcelo Andretta. He works on laser crystallization of glasses and he is currently developing special types of glass ceramics for pH sensors. And you also have this old fellow here who likes to work on diffusion, viscous flow, relaxation, sintering, crystal nucleation growth, glass forming ability and glass ceramics. I have been working for some time in uh, all those topics. Uh, the current research that we have in the lab deals with diffusion, relaxation, crystallization at very deep undercoolings below the laboratory glass transition temperature. We also have been working for many years on nucleation growth models, trying to understand, improve, or come up with new models, structural um, relationships to nucleation in the very early stages of crystallization, glass stability against crystallization, glass forming ability via DSE and other techniques, crystallization of highly known stoichiometric glasses, and sintering with concurrent surface crystallization. Um, on a more technological uh, side, we work with glass ceramics, trying to develop 
or to improve existing glass ceramics. And currently we work with bioactive glass ceramics, ionic conducting glass ceramics, strong and tough glass ceramics for dental and medical applications, transparent armor glass ceramics, and PTR glasses and glass ceramics. Let me give you a few examples of research results. This is one which we have been working for some years, you know, the log of diffusivity versus inverse of temperature for a particular glass forming system, lithium disilicate, from above the melting point of the crystal through the super cool regime, showing here, for instance, the breakdown of the stoke einstein equation, down to the glassy stage. So we are interested in understanding the diffusion phenomena that control relaxation and crystallization processes, for instance. Um, on a more technological point of view, we work and have been working for years with glass ceramics, for instance, trying to produce highly crystalline, still transparent glass ceramics for different applications, or very tough glass ceramics for dental and bio applications, uh, biomedical applications, and including uh, different shapes in powder, grains, scaffold coatings, or monolithic pieces, and even uh, blankets, fibers, and meshes that we have been working with. Uh, opportunities for collaboration, computer simulations of nucleation growth processes, measurements of diffusion coefficients of the slowest species, CP data, which is badly needed for relaxation crystallization kinetics at deep undercoolings, structure versus nucleation ability by in situ or ex situ techniques such as SACS, XAPS, NMR, XAS at, at, at high temperatures and high resolution TM. So if you are an expert in these techniques and these problems, we would like very much to collaborate with you. So thank you so much for your kind attention. Have a good day. Bye bye. Yes, sir. <laughs>